Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be doing a comparison look at the Ryzen 9 7850X for the mainstream platform versus a Threadripper 7960X. So we have a 16 core, 32 thread, mainstream consumer desktop, dual channel system, equipped with 96 gigabytes, so that's two sticks of RAM, 2x48 at 6400 megahertz versus a quad channel capable platform equipped with the G-Skill Zeta R5 Neos. So these are running at their extra profile of 6400. So same speed, same timings. The difference is we have dual channel versus quad channel. We have a 16 core 32 thread versus a 24 48 thread. So we're gonna take a look and see what is the difference when you compare a consumer flagship processor against a entry level high end desktop processor, which is kind of borderline on workstations. All tests are done using the AMD Radeon 7900 XTX. So we have that and we're gonna be looking primarily at CPU benchmarks, but we are going to cover gaming because I know that's something that a lot of people were asking for. Even though I do not recommend buying Threadripper just for gaming, it will be nice to know how it performs if you did want to build a high-end desktop to do it all. Let's get into the benchmarks. So in conclusion, you can see that a high-end desktop Threadripper-based system can play games, although not as well as a standard desktop, and that is primarily because the game engines and the Windows Scheduler are not designed to scale beyond a certain amount of threads. It looks like 8 cores is kind of the limit right now. If you go beyond 8 cores, the other cores aren't really leveraged for gaming. And because the 7950X has a higher boost clock, versus the Threadripper CPU, that higher boost translates into higher FPS, and that's the reason why there is a difference in the gaming performance. But when we look at multi-thread, you can see from the benchmarks that stuff like DaVinci Resolve, videos render faster when you're doing H.264 rendering, using the CPU to do most of the work, although the GPU can be leveraged. Uh, and another thing too that I noticed with DaVinci Resolve is that the application doesn't really scale beyond 32 threads, at least the free version that I use for DaVinci Resolve. It seems like 32 threads is the limit in terms of how many it will scale to. If you have the studio version, it'll probably scale more. File compression, file decompression, very good on Threadripper. AMD, historically, their Zen architecture has always done well in file compression and decompression, especially decompression, which is a more realistic real world everyday scenario that you'll often run into, you know, if you download a zip file. And then for Blender, you know, Blender is very, very fast in Threadripper because Blender scales very well. We also saw with 3D Mark, with a CPU profile benchmark, that when you have high thread count, the 
Threadripper does a lot better than the typical Ryzen CPU, but once you get down to eight cores or eight threads max, you start seeing the Ryzen pull ahead over Threadripper, and that's because the clock speed on Ryzen is faster. Now, I haven't done anything with PBO yet, but you can use PBO and Curve Optimizer to improve the performance of Threadripper on a per core basis. So that's really nice that, that's, that it has the ability to do that. So you could tune the gaming performance on this processor. It's just very time consuming. So overall, my thoughts on the platform. Uh, if you're somebody who wants to build a single PC to do everything, including streaming, gaming, content creation, uh, if you do things like virtualization, so if you're running like virtual routers, you can run a lot of virtual machines with this, provided you have enough RAM. However, the quad channel memory and just being able to run very high dense, you know, like 256 gigabytes of RAM or more is very beneficial. So overall, I am impressed with the efficiency. It doesn't use that much power. So in terms of power consumption, it's actually very similar to Intel's 13th Gen i9 or 14th Gen you know, like a 14900K power consumption is very similar to that CPU. So if you're somebody who is concerned about how to cool this thing, any sort of 360 millimeter AIO will work fine. Noctua has an air cooler, which I am using with this. All the testing was done with the Noctua and it never thermal throttled. So overall, very impressed. It's an excellent return to form for AMD, making its return to the high-end desktop market. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.